started in the friendly relation. A quick rapid fire quiz, a yes or no. California governor to relocate veterans cemetery to make way for affordable housing. Yes, no. Yes. Yes. New species of deadly spider kills five in US. No. Firefighters forced to buy more expensive data package during wildfire. No. Okay. The real answers. The third one was real. The first was fake. So it is that difficult today to segregate news, which wasn't in the past. There's just news. Today we have real news and fake news. Dear ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters and guests, welcome to the world of <coughs> real news. Recently, just four days ago, if you have read, if you are an avid reader of news, you might have heard of one, uh, I think he's a director and photographer, who said the entire Delta Airlines jet was all for himself to fly from A to B. And one popular news channel quickly picked it up because first, first finger first, and the rest of them would not want to leave, le be left behind. The news started spreading, it was all over Twitter and the believing in the numbers, 110,000 likes of the post and 70,000 retweets <coughs> on the basis of one fake news. After that, the news channels realized that it was not true and there was a correction while they were doing this research that it was not real. But the numbers what we saw, he never had more than 200 likes on any of his posts. And here we have someone who's been talking about and much before, if you have the more very popular where, uh, aspect from where this all started, probably the US elections, then you see it was said was to be strongly influenced by the quality of the news that was consumed by the voters. And particularly in the last three months, statistics prove that the fake news volume increased from 3 million to 8.3 million in the last two months to new, the US elections, whereas the real news moved downward from 9 million to 7 point. So that was 150% spike in not so credible news consumed by voters. Then based on the sample set and the uh, narrowing down which was the source of sending this information to the audience was turned out to be Facebook. When 22% of the uh, incorrect news being consumed or channelized through Facebook groups and so on. So, what's the ROI here? The ROI is in multiple ways. Once the sense of accomplishment that I achieved something, that is in this case the objective of communicating which was incorrect news or an outcome which sometimes is financial. So, with that, uh, we move to the definition of what is fake news. Fake news sometimes is completely inaccurate. It doesn't exist. It was created. Two, it happened, but it has been twisted and presented in a manner that it was meant to be by the ones who are communicating. And third, something happened, but it was okay and it never happened. There is a third category which makes this very difficult for you and me to relate with it with a sense of accuracy and trustworthiness. Now, who are these reporters, disseminators, facilitators? They were there in the past. If you look, at the recent years, thanks to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, we all are news generators too. And we all are in a hurry. We are ecstatic ex to share the news with everyone else, the first one in the group, to post it. So, without even going through the credibility of the information, we do the first thing is passed on. And then we get it to get time. So on this, there is a statistics which said 59% of them do not read the news, but just should. But that was removed from the website saying that it was not credible. Because today we went on doing a small research to find out, to go back to credible information, which folks have removed it from their page because they found it to be an inaccurate study. A while ago, we were discussing about the research, credible sources, but no name to it. And so the total news generation capacity today is 2.2 billion among all these channels in, on a population of 7.7 billion. So you can understand the power of 2.2 billion people 
spreading or sharing or whatever you put the name because they are not reporters. They are disseminators of information. So with that, what did countries do for it? Many countries swiftly responded after the, the US elections part was discussed in India and many countries. Singapore said a jail term of 10 years plus 1 million in fine. France, a penalty of 1 year in prison and 75,000 euros. Germany went two steps forward. They said 50 million euros and if not in 24 hours, if the platform does not remove that news from their channel. And Sri Lanka imposed this 3 to 5 years of imprisonment for spreading fake news. That is all that's good. The last one was I made it. So Sri Lanka <laughs> hasn't yet uh, made it final. So, sharing a lie makes you a liar. So, we need to be very responsible. And how can we do this? We can be a, we need to become a wise consumer and disseminate a reporter and whatever the definition title that you can give. There are six, check, six checklist points that can help you. Develop a critical mindset. Question, why is this information created? Is it any purpose to sell something to me, to influence my decision making? Check the source. We all know CNN, BBC and there are so many sources. Many of them have this dot offer, dot info net and so on. Be cautious before passing it on. See who is also reporting on the story. When you have a sense of doubt, Google it. If no one else is reporting it, there is a reason to suspect the credibility of it. Examine the evidence. It's very important to see is there any specific data, no research. It has to be the specific name of the agency, when it was done and so on. Look for fake images. Often you will see this to increase the credibility, but you can make out 60% can't. But when you are in doubt, don't pass it on. And last one, check if that sounds right. It's all about common sense. If it sounds unbelievable, it probably is. So we all together have a responsibility to bring back the real news and make it. Thank you.